We will pick up in Romans chapter 1 and verse 18. We talked about the first part of the verse uh, in the last class, but let's uh, read it again. We'll read a few verses here. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. We'll stop there for now. Romans chapter 1, verse 18, through about verse 20 of Romans chapter 3, is basically one subject. And that is the condition of the lost. Okay, it'll touch on other things, certainly. But the main theme of this portion of the book of Romans is the terrible condition that lost people are in. They are completely lost, completely undone. They have no chance of going to heaven uh, on their own. They cannot even contribute to their salvation. There's nothing they can do. Um, of themselves in order to get to heaven. They are lost, lost, lost. They are dead in trespasses and sins. They have no hope. Okay? And we're going to see that as we go through the next about two chapters. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, it says that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men there are an awful lot of people who believe that they are righteous. Uh, the problem with many of them is they have created their own standards of what is right and wrong, what's good and bad, and so on. Uh, but they are truly ungodly. They are unrighteous in the sight of our God. The true and living God is holy. Completely, absolutely holy. And every one of us is unrighteous in his sight. But then it says, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. The word hold there should say who hold down the truth or who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. These folks are lost themselves and they are actively suppressing the truth, trying to keep people from hearing and believing the truth. And this has been going on since the beginning of time, that people have been opposing the truth of God and trying to prevent other people from hearing the truth. So they suppress the truth. They are guilty of deliberate rejection of the truth. Now there's another example of this in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. And it goes on to talk about how they perished in the flood. What we see here is that people are willingly ignorant of the truth. There is a God in heaven. He made us and the entire universe. He later, because of man's sin, destroyed the earth with a great flood that covered the entire world. And he is still working in the affairs of men and offers salvation to all who will believe. But people are willingly ignorant of these facts. Um, people try to hold down or suppress the truth of the Creator God and the God who judged us in the great flood. These are things that are very unpalatable to man, have always been unpalatable to man, but especially I think in these last days uh, they don't want to hear it. And they do everything they possibly can to make men believe that those things are fairy tales, they are myths that never happened. Okay, so they are guilty of deliberate rejection of the truth. We see though uh, in verse 19 th this is a this truth that we're going to look at now explains a lot of the troubles in the world today, a lot of the problems that men have within themselves and 
Well, let's, let's read it here. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That which may be known of God is manifest in them. God gives every person who is born into this world a knowledge of God. Every person who's born into this world knows that there is a God. Okay? We're going to see as we go through this chapter how that they have changed that. They, they had knowledge that they are doing everything they possibly can to ignore, but he's telling us here that the knowledge of God is manifested inside every person. Okay, we know it just because it's true. It's real. We know it. God hath showed it unto them. Not only is it born into us, He has shown it. And this I think He's referring to, in fact He'll, he'll make this clear as we go down here. He's talking about creation. Personally, I can't understand how a person can look out the window or walk out the door in the morning and not realize there is a God. Okay, we happen to live in far southern Florida where it is hot most of the year and things grow year round and it's a beautiful area with all kinds of plants and flowers and amazing things. But regardless of where you live, how do you walk outside and see creation? Look at the stars at night, look at the plants, look at the flowers, look at the animals. How can you look at all those incredible things and say, well this just all happened by accident. There was this huge explosion about a hundred billion years ago or something like that and here we are. There have been trillions and trillions and trillions of beneficial accidents leading up to us today. And that explains everything. It doesn't explain anything. Okay? There's so many things wrong with that idea, it's just amazing that anybody can swallow it. They swallow it because they want to swallow it. The idea that there is a God who made them, to whom they are accountable, is not something they want to believe. They want to do everything they can to convince themselves that there is no supreme being to whom they will ever give an account. They want to ignore all that. And so they create other gods, they create false science and so on to try to explain Him away. Verse 20, the invisible things of Him, the things we can't see about God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Okay? Look at these words. They are clearly seen. It's not hard to understand. Okay, the hard thing is swallowing evolution. The easy thing is to accept somebody made this. Okay? Being understood. Okay, they know it, they understand it, but they still reject it. No wonder people are so mixed up. No wonder people are, are, I mean, it's just amazing how messed up people are, but they're fighting against a knowledge that they have inside them and a knowledge that they see with their eyes every time they look out the door. Okay? So they're clearly seen, they're understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead. Okay, Godhead means that He's a person. He's not a force. He's not a power. He's not an influence. He's not something floating around in the ether. Okay, He is a person with intelligence, with the ability to think, to, to have a will. Okay, He's a person. And He possesses eternal power. 
He has always been, which is what eternal means, and always will be. Okay, but eternity goes in both directions. That's hard to grasp, but God has always been and God always will be. And He has power. Okay, if you get into the details of creation and see the, the minute, incredibly, I mean, sophisticated and wonderful things that God has done so that we've got all of these wonderful living things that He's made. Um, he obviously has incredible intelligence, far beyond anything we could ever dream of. But he's not only got the intelligence to think of these things, to design all these things, but he's got the power to make them. So he thinks it and he does it. Okay, his eternal power and Godhead. Our God is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person with incredible intelligence and with everlasting power and the Word of God, the Bible tells us also that He is loving, He is holy, He is righteous, and one of the greatest things about Him, I think, is that He never changes. Okay, so men have suppressed the truth. They're holding down the truth. They know things that they will not admit. They refuse to admit that these things are true, and they go to incredible lengths to try to prove that the things that they know are true are not true. And then try to convince everybody else that the few of us who believe it are nuts. Okay? Um, so they have no excuse. They know things that they refuse to admit. They know things that they are willingly ignorant of. They try to take the thought out of their mind and ignore it completely. <laughs> So they have no excuse before God. Um, because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay, so all of mankind once knew God. He's, he's going to give us in the next, oh, what is it, about 12 verses, mankind's downward path. There was a time, it's hard to imagine, but the Bible describes it, there was a time when every human being knew God. They started off with Adam and Eve who had children, who had children, who had children, who had children, and somewhere along the line, probably with the descendants of Cain, man became, began to diverge from the right path. Okay, and you ended up with some who knew God and some who didn't. Okay, but there was a time when they knew God. They didn't give Him the glory that He deserved. Okay, can you imagine a person who can make all of the wonderful things that we see? Don't you think He deserves glory? Of course He deserves glory. And He not only made this wonderful world, but He created the plan of salvation so that we could be redeemed back to Him, reconciled to God, made His friend, and actually made His children. Okay, and this, this person who did all these wonderful things deserves glory. But mankind refused to give Him glory. Okay, neither were thankful. Beloved, I think those of us who are born again people need to realize what a terrible terrible sin ingratitude is. And of course, first of all, starting with ingratitude to God. But I think we ought to put in with there just ingratitude to people. People do stuff for us all the time that we act like, oh, that's no big deal. I deserve that. Okay? Um, there's an awful lot of things people do that we don't deserve. They do it out of the kindness of their heart, and we ought to say thank you. And of course, we ought to, on a regular basis, give praise and glory to God and thank Him for all the wonderful things He's done. When you start asking God for things, I think it ought to come to mind every single time. I think we ought to think, have I been thankful for the prayers that He's answered? 
for the things that He's given me or do I act like I am deserving, that God owes me, which is crazy. God owes us nothing. He's done so much. So when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. So they became vain and foolish while thinking that they were wise. Okay? And boy, have we ever got the big head these days. I mean, we think we are just incredible, incredible people, and we know so much, and God knows so little. In fact, He knows so little He's not even there. Uh, they became vain and foolish while thinking themselves to be wise. And this rejection of truth produced darkness in their hearts. So professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Their foolish heart was darkened. Okay, that's not a good thing. You want to be enlightened. And it's incredible that people use the, the term enlightened to refer to, you know, crazy things, stupid things. No, we're, we're in the dark. Um, vain in their imaginations, their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God, well, we'll stop there for the moment. So they, they had the knowledge of the true and living God, that there was one God, that He was all-powerful, all-wise, all-knowing, and yet was a God of love and mercy and grace, that He was absolutely holy, and yet He loved sinners. They had all of that knowledge. They knew all of those things, but they rejected the truth. They suppressed the truth. They hold it down, and then... They decided, well, we've rejected the true God, the one God, but we need a God. We need to have, have religion. We need to have something. And so they began creating gods. And some of them they made like a man. And they, they carved things out of wood and stone, and they melted brass and silver and whatever, and they created their gods. And some of them looked like men, and some of them looked like birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Okay, and if you travel the world, you will find a lot of places, and um, the purpose of these classes is to uh, instruct uh, godly men uh, in India who are either in the ministry now and need additional uh, education or they're preparing for the ministry. Uh, and that is a country that has the average person in India worships a multitude of gods. And you cannot go any distance at all in most parts of India without passing a temple or a shrine or something that has uh, an image of some god or other. Um, there are some that look like um, men with a head of an elephant. There are uh, snake gods. There are all kinds of things. Um, and that is common in much of the world, a great portion of the world. Uh, not every false religion is polytheistic. Some are monotheistic, believing in one God, um, but still a false religion because it's not about Jesus Christ. Um, there are other false religions that are called pantheist, where everything is God. Uh, and they, they, the, the animists that worship spirits, and there's a spirit in the tree, and a spirit in the brook, and a spirit in the clouds, and there's the God of the harvest, and the God of this and that, and the other thing. Um, and this is very, very common uh, around the world. So they, they took the knowledge of God and said, we don't want this. We won't have this. And they got rid of that, and instead they added now this new religion of their own making, their own way to redemption, their own way to uh, fulfillment of life, or whatever it might have been. 
um, but they have these multi multitude of gods that look like people and animals and so on. Um, and it's a, a terrible thing that mankind has done in turning away from the true God to gods of their own creation. Okay, so in verse 24, it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You see this downward, um, you can't say progression, uh, because it's not progress. It's going backward, it's going down. It's, instead of an upward spiral, it's a downward spiral. And mankind has been on this uh, from the beginning just about. They once knew God, but they turned away from Him and worshipped other things. Um, so because of that, they didn't give Him glory, they didn't give Him gratitude, they turned away from His knowledge, created false gods, and it says, wherefore, because of this, there are consequences to sin. Okay, when you sin, your heart gets hard. Your heart gets, gets cold. Your heart gets dark. Okay? It's, it's going down, 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 down. So because of this, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And something that I have seen a number of times uh, and it's not just in polytheistic countries, but also in countries that supposedly worship only one God. Uh, many, many times false religion and immorality go hand in hand. False religion has no, no power to affect change in people's lives. False religion has no solution to man's sin problems. And in fact, false religion very often just uh, exacerbates or aggravates men's, man's sin nature and uh, hides it and covers it up under a cloak of religion. Uh, so they became false religionists and God gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. Okay, their own hearts. Um, I don't know how things are in, in India but in America, we constantly hear that you need to follow your heart, follow your heart, or trust your heart. That is so stupid. A Christ said in Matthew 15 and verse 19, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Okay, these things come out of the heart of man. It's not outside influences that is our biggest problem. Yeah, there are bad influences that, that press down upon us, but it's the inside of us that is our real problem. And you don't need to follow your heart or trust your heart. Okay? Um, people need to turn to God is what they need. But in America we hear that all the time. Trust your heart, follow your heart, um, and your heart is wicked, and you don't need to do that. So, he gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed or exchanged the truth of God into a lie or for a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Okay, so they, they just continued to go down and down and down. They exchanged the truth of God. They had it, and they got rid of it and exchanged it for a lie. They now worship and serve the creature more than the Creator. And they are serving man, they are serving false gods, and this kind of thing, and it's just going down and down and down and down. Um, for this cause. Oh, and let me just say something about that. Um, and this doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it. This was written, obviously, uh, close to 2,000 years ago. Uh, the modern e ecological movement, uh, environmentalist movement, was not even around. 
Um, but today there are an awful lot of people who worship the creature in a different way. Many of them would say there even is no God. Um, but uh, they put so much emphasis on uh, creation, on, on nature. They wouldn't call it creation, but on nature that they end up worshiping nature instead of the God who created nature. Okay? Um, and even Christian people. I remember reading something a while back about green evangelicals and the emphasis that they put on the environment. And it's almost become a gospel of the environment rather than the gospel of personal redemption. And Christian people are growing, growing around the world instead of telling people about Christ, telling them uh, how to take care of the environment and not pollute and that kind of thing. And I'm not in favor of pollution or destroying endangered species or things like that, but certainly a human being's soul is more important than a snail darter or a baby seal. Okay, there's a whole lot of people would disagree with me on that, um, but it's not true. Okay. Um, so they worship and serve the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. God is so wonderful and so good and so gracious, and yet we don't worship Him. Instead, we worship animals and sticks and stones. It's nuts. Um, for this cause, verse 26, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Um, and so lesbianism and homosexuality is a result of man turning their backs on God. The further you get away from God, the worse you become. And these are our sins that God hates, just like He hates all sin. He hates lesbian sin, homosexual sin, He hates heterosexual sin. Okay? We, we must not forget that. Okay? We're, everybody's condemned before God until they come to Christ. Okay? We're all in the same boat until we come to Christ, and then we're saved by His grace. Um, verse 20, 28, um, well, you, you notice in the end of uh, 27, receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. You cannot get further and further from God. You cannot go deeper and deeper and deeper into sin without consequences. Sin has consequences. And I think you can see this in the homosexual lifestyle. It's a dangerous, dangerous lifestyle. There are more murders than with heterosexuals. There, there's more diseases. They have a shorter lifespan and so on. And uh, that's just the way it is. Uh, people think you're, you're a hater if you say those things, but they're simply facts. Um, Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Okay, they didn't want God in their minds, so they put Him out of mind. They're trying to ignore Him. They can't really do it, but they're trying. Since the knowledge is inside them, and the knowledge is outside, every time you look at nature, at creation, you see God. Uh, but they're trying everything they can to ignore him and pretend he doesn't exist. And they're having a hard time doing it. Um, so God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Um, reprobate. Uh, the word means to be tried and found wanting and therefore be rejected. Okay? You try it, it doesn't work, and you reject it. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Their mind has been rejected. They have refused the truth, and 
they've been rejected by God. Their mind has been. They disapproved of God, and God disapproves of them. Uh, then the next few verses, he talks about the products of a reprobate mind. These are the things that come out of a reprobate mind. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Okay, that's quite a list of sins. And some of them are things that an awful lot of people would say, oh yeah, those are terrible. But there's some things on that list that people act are, are no big deal. Um, there, there are sins in this, uh, in this list that Christians tend to trivialize sometimes. Uh, covetousness. Uh, the Ten Commandments forbid it, and yet we act like, well, it's just kind of a natural thing to envy others and to want what they have and, and so on. Um, a lot of what's called ambition and drive and zeal is actually covetousness. Um, but anyway, he's, he's in this list is not only uh, fornication and wickedness and so on, but covetousness, envy, whisperers. Um, an awful lot of churches have whisperers in them. Backbiters, a lot of churches have backbiters. Proud. Um, I one time heard a man say that he didn't have a problem with pride. And uh, he later killed himself. Okay, and that's a problem with pride. Uh, he certainly did have a problem with pride. He thought very, very highly of himself and poorly of a lot of others. Uh, we're all proud. Every human being has a problem with pride. It manifests itself in different ways, but we have a problem with pride. Disobedient to parents. Uh, in America these days, we act like, well, that's just normal. Um, parents have no right to expect their children to be obedient. Uh, we just, just let it go and, and just pretend it doesn't exist. And so raising children in America for a lot of people is misery because they don't believe they have the right to keep them under control. Uh, disobedient to parents, covenant breakers. <laughs> I remember teaching this one time and what popped into my head was uh, a certain athlete who was making millions and millions of dollars every year to play a sport and he decided to um, hold out for the, uh, the preseason camp where they're training and everything and he didn't show up for camp because he wanted his contract to be renegotiated. He had had a good year and he wasn't satisfied with the millions he was getting. He wanted several million more. Well, that man is not a hero. He's a covenant breaker. He signed a contract. He's making a fortune, but he needs a bigger fortune. And, uh, you know, that's, <laughs> I don't remember even what sport it was, whether it was baseball or football or, or whatever. But um, a problem we have in America is the people we, we make heroes today. And uh, let's see, I think I've got Psalm 12, verse 8 here. The wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted. And uh, in America, we have exalted a lot of the wrong people. Um, almost anybody that's famous in America, and, and you can't say it 100% because that would not be true. But almost all of the famous people in America are wicked people, uh, some way or other. Okay, so he gives this list of sins, and then he says, who knowing the judgment of God. Again, this is something they know. Down deep inside, people know you're not going to get away with it. There is a God. He has the right to judge you, and he will judge you. 
So who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. They realize they deserve God's judgment. They're worthy of the wrath of God being upon them. I mean, they won't say it. Most of them will say, well, if there is a heaven, I'm good enough to go there. Um, but though they commit such things, they're worthy of death. They not only do the same, they keep doing them, but they have pleasure in them that do it. And that's where I got that idea of the vilest of men being exalted. The wicked walk on every side. If we hold up wretched people, terrible sinful people, then that's all we're going to have is wicked and sinful people. They're on every hand, every side, because the vilest are exalted. All right, that is the end of that class, and uh, thank you very much.